In the next few videos, I'm going to talk a little bit about belonging, and a little bit about home, and a little bit about family, and a little bit about land. I have had many experiences as a traveller with different versions of these in different varieties and different types of connections. Navigating each one is different. Navigating how they all feel is different. They cannot be compared and each one holds a very special place in my heart, but somehow is also yet confusing. Trust me to find the fish at the airport. Oh my gosh, we made it through from uh, Vancouver Island to Vancouver Airport. It was the most stressful connection I have done in a very long time. Um, our flight on the little plane was delayed by a whole hour. And we had like two, three hours to get from the small domestic terminal to international check-in, collect our baggage at the baggage claim and then recheck it to the next flight. My heart was racing, we were stressing, we got the notification that there was a delay before we had even left and tried to see if we could catch a ferry to Vancouver or switch to a different flight. It was just not going to happen. So cue several stressful hours later and running from one end of the airport all the way to the other. We made it. We've had a hot minute to take a breath find our gate, sit down. My stomach was in an absolute ball of a knot. <sighs> and our flight by board was really soon and we'll be on our way, I'm so excited. After quite the stressful connection, it was such a relief to be on the plane, the 14 hour long journey, and settle in. Definitely not the easiest thing. Small seats, but yet I'm so proud of being on Air New Zealand, the airline heading to my birthplace. My home, my first home, my first of many. Proud to arrive in the country and be welcomed by the indigenous Maori culture.
coming back to New Zealand, I'm excited to connect, learn more, respect and understand the cultural significance of the song, the language, the carving, the dancing. Remembering many fond memories of watching and learning such things as a child. this beautiful map actually in the glove box of the van and I decided to commandeer it because we're going to draw on the map the route that we're taking all down the country and show you as we go along. We flew into Auckland. Our next de destination is down here in Wellington before we cross over into the South Island. So we're going to draw on the map our route through the country show you. from Auckland Airport to Piha Beach. Day two. The irony is that I came here for summer and it's windy and rainy, but it's beautiful and it's warm. It's wet and so windy, but the storm is moving south faster than we are. This is what they call part of New Zealand's wild west coast and with the incredibly strong winds that are coming by at the moment, the rain is a little sideways, it is definitely wild. But I'm by the beach and it's surf! Yes, the weather is miserable, <laughs> but it's still beautiful. <sighs> Things often never turn out as you expect them to. Um, we came from Vancouver where it was snowy, zero to two degrees at most, winter. Here, now it's like 19 to 20 degrees Celsius, which is lovely, but it's wet and rainy because New Zealand is a tropical climate. So, it's beautiful and green because it rains a lot um, and even getting here um, I was so anxious and so worried on the day of our flight because we had a connecting flight that was with a different airline and and it was delayed and delayed and the connection time that we had between flights was getting shorter and shorter and I'm sitting there being like ah, are we gonna make it you know when you've got a 14 hour flight it's like the biggest bus ride of your life and being late for something like that is just uncomfortable so and it all turned out fine it all turned out we got through the flight was on time for what it, they had said we had just enough time to get from one end of the airport to the other we were walking quickly but it was okay and then i feel like this ease and relaxing and sinking into a sense of what will be will be this trip i've had so many ideas and hopes for it because i've been to new zealand i was born here so letting go of that and letting the magic of 
whatever's gonna happen happen feels really good just sinking into the present moment with no expectations and enjoying the beauty or the wind or the rain and summer will warm us up when it is ready and I'm looking forward to that and in the meantime it is temperate and wet apparently I needed a dose of spring before I got to summer nature you have a sense of humor I don't know if this is a good idea climbing the tallest rock on the beach in the middle of a gale force windstorm and I have to hold on over the view Piha is New Zealand's most famous surf beach, situated on the west coast of the North Island, 40 kilometers from the city of Auckland. This black iron sand beach has a reputation for awesome surf which rolls in over the Tasman Sea. It can be moody also as it was when we were there, misty and mysterious, wild, wet and very windswept. goes off as it did while we were there too. Phone lines come down and sometimes the road in and out gets blocked. Living here is not for the faint hearted. The swell can be huge. I can remember almost getting sw swallowed as a child. Never swim unless you're swimming between the flags where the lifeguards are on watch. It was so fun to be wave jumping again. One of my very fond memories from a child. This time, the waves are smaller and I am bigger. And it's equally as exciting. <laughs> ocean snack. Yummy chippies. Now I know a lot of you who live in the southern the northern hemisphere haven't heard of this southern hemisphere delicacy called Fijoa. This this thing. It is a green fruit it goes in summer and it tastes between the cross, cross between a guava and a pineapple and we're gonna drink some a jar and apple wine. It's my favorite fruit and I have been without this fruit for five years. Right, let's open the bottle without putting a hole in the ceiling.
So good. stopped raining and I thought I'd tell you a funny story so lying down on this lovely couch bed yesterday evening look I got a little bit sunburned and it's been stormy and gray out the sun here in New Zealand is no joke it's either the sun or wind because we had wind 30 30 kilometers an hour all the way up to 70 kilometers an hour, which is like 120 miles or something. I don't know. Anyway, flying on relaxing and I'm holding my phone, you know, watching videos and I dropped it on my face. Look, it hit my eyebrow. The phone went dunk. And now I have given myself a little bit of a shiner. So if you see me in future videos with a small black eye, I'm good. And I promise I will put more sunscreen on today so that this red nose doesn't become a permanent fixture. Wish me luck! <laughs> staying in this beautiful campground at Piha Beach and during this crazy wind and rainstorm it has been beautiful. We got in the sea and got to go for a swim and this is our tiny little home. It's been a really like restful grounding time after getting to the country, doing the funeral and internment with my dad's ashes which was really emotional and catching up with my brother and sister we're now off and yes it's still raining <laughs> but look it's making my hair beautiful and curly it loves the moisture um, and a huge shout out to the managers of the campground here they're absolutely gems and have been so gracious and kind it's been amazing bye
It's very weird being back home, visiting small towns. And they've changed so much. This used to be a tiny sleepy town and now there's thousands and thousands of houses, subdevelopment. But the giant ice cream shop's still there. This is a $4 two scoop ice cream. Look how huge it is. And they do up to 10 scoops on one ice cream. Anyway, I'm going to continue putting ice cream all over my face and see you later. afternoon where you've traveled for a while you've been on the road and all you need is some Tim Tams mm. yum fueled up by chocolate biscuits and nursing one shiner I'm ready for the road. Let's go. Let's keep on traveling. This time we're off to see my sister and her kids at their farm. I'm looking forward to it. We spent the whole day at the beach and it was really lovely. Day four, which is today, we've driven all the way back, all the way down to Pocono where I got ice cream and now we are by this lake over here. This afternoon we plan to continue down this road and then off Highway 23 by Parongia Park Forest, somewhere where the G is, where my sister lives. Which would be awesome. Can't wait to show you where we go next. Make sure like you're not doing it so then it looks like we just did it. Hi everybody! I've got some special people to introduce you to. This is... Maddie, hi. And this is... Charlie. And these are my nibblings. And we have a special... What is it? Taking show. 
A caking show? A baking show? We're going to do yeah. a bake-off. Yeah, it's a caking and baking. And the idea is we're going to be decorating some cupcakes and we have some other family members... Judging. Judging. Excellent. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right? Yay! Yay! Let's go. What are you doing, Charlie? What do you got? We're making the last one open and it's a carrot. It's a carrot? And what have you got here? All the bunnies. Do the bunnies have names? No. Mom, it won't stick. Uh -huh. What are we what are we gonna do with these? We're gonna ice them. Mm-hmm. And what have we got here? Different colours? So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then there's um purple there. Ooh, did you make that one specially? Yeah. And then there's this heart and this heart, and then there's black, pink, white. Perfect. What are we doing? putting frosting on, which helps the marzipan fondant stuff stick. And then it will also taste nice because this stuff has got coloring and it's not really edible. Look at this professional baker skills right here. So purple and yellow. Yeah. So I'm gonna make like a cupcake that's like, well there's three layers and then it's gonna have these hearts on top that I've made. Those are so cool. Oh, yeah. Very nice. <gasps> Those are so cute. Oh, very hey cool. Hey guys, it's going to be really gentle. Nice. Whoa. Hey guys, don't you hate excess? Like, yeah. So, like, you've got so much left because you made too much. No. But then you get to do it again. Cupcakes are ready for judging. Yes. Judges review. Judges review. And the judge we have. Hi there. I am Florence's mum. Yay for mum! It's my privilege tonight to be the judge of this cupcake competition. Right. Next up we have me. You can still judge these if you want to, but. Wow, these are magnificent. If you look up close, you can see that it's a cracked heart. Mm. So yeah. it's like... A broken like, heart? It's basically like, see, this is a question mark as well. So you're like, you're like asking someone, are you sure you like me? Like, are you sure you're in love with me? No! Wow! wow. Magnificent! Do you remember sit over there, Tally? What? Guys, I think... That he's yeah, going to win it because Black of the buns. But it's up to her. It's Bunny. 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 What's this one, Charlie? It's meant to be a sheep, but I don't have any more white. <laughs> it's a no. red sheep. Oh, some right. brown sheep are some sheep are white and brown. I've come to a decision. You've come to a decision? Yes, I have. What is it? We have a tie for first equal. Show us between this Barney Rabbit, Barney Rabbit and this. Wow! Yeah. Second place is this lovely little pony. Oh! What's third place? Third place is also Look, a, a tie. Pieces. Yes. Pizzas. <laughs> Pizza? Like Even Theo knows it's pizza. Yeah, and it's, it's a pizza twins. Been stolen from here, so I think these here go together. The pizza one's breaking. Yes. These two here are wonderful, marvelous, beautiful, and fantastic. Ah! Big round of applause. Give everybody Yay. a clap. Woo! Thank you.
My dad passed while I was in Canada. I was halfway through my immigration process, and it was just before COVID hit and the whole world shut down. For the next three years, I tried to get home to New Zealand to grieve with my family. I missed the funeral and attended it online via Zoom, which was heartbreaking. Now, five years later, I finally made it back to New Zealand to share with my family and bury my father. We had an internment, a special ceremony, together as we buried his ashes. It felt like a moment we had been waiting for, all of us. Many tears were shed. Here is the letter I read at his funeral. Dear Dad, my heart aches that I am in Canada, half a world away. So I offer this letter as what I would say if I was there with all of the family at the funeral. I ask you to tell your dear ones I love you whenever possible and know that I am here with you in spirit. My dad loved me and I want to share a little about my love for him. As the rainbow bright of our family, I'm sure I caused some of the grey hairs that crowned my dad's head. We both really loved getting a garage sale bargain on a Saturday morning for some odd knick-knack that we might one day, possibly, sometime in the very distant future, find useful, maybe. Stellar thrifting skills aside, my dad's love has made me so grateful to belong to this family, with our very differing opinions and experiences. I'm thinking particularly of how, in times of need, somebody was always there to answer the phone, and how wishes of love and support have been given to me across the miles over the last several years. A family's love is a precious gift, one I didn't always see for looking when I was younger, sometimes not able to decipher the I love yous in the difficult conversations, which I now appreciate. So much of who I am today, a fiercely independent thinker, a lover of bad puns, and somebody who can find utility in almost anything, I see and loved dearly in my dad. To honour my dad's extensive love of literature, poets, and ginormous book collection, I want to quote the poet Thomas Campbell, To live in hearts left behind is not to die.